Hey everyone, uh, Kevin here today. We are at the Aceable office again for this draw. Seth is out of town. I don't know where Seth is. Do you know where Seth is? Um, yeah. Seth just told me I'm not gonna be here tomorrow and I don't ask follow-up questions. Uh, okay, very ominous. So I, as Kevin, get to draw whatever I want and he will tell me later if I messed up and we will have a follow-up video. When you messed up. Yeah, when I mess up, thanks. Uh, speaking of, we have various other people here in the Aceful office. Oh. Uh, we got Desiree. Hello. Uh, Daniel. What's up? He's drawing some graffiti today, wild style. Uh, we got Anna. Hello. Audrey. Hi. And Sam. Howdy. There you go. Cool. Today, I, we're, I'm going to try to knock out page five. Well, it's six panels, but we always end up adding more panels. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be the reveal more detail work entering the flea market. Usually this is pretty tough for me because I ask Seth what was in his head for camera angles. So I will just guess and uh, the people here will tell me if it's a bad camera angle. When? Yeah, when. <laughs> Anna, you're really mean today. Um, yeah, you? speaking of... I'm kind of drawing a frame of some kind. I am drawing a frame. This is a good frame. So basically what happened last time uh, was we were on page four and we ended up moving two of the shots over to page four. So you can kind of see here that we end with an establishing wide shot of the flea market. So we're, we're, we're trying to re recreate this like feeling of like a 400 vendor flea market. Yeah. Did you try that pickle at that flea market? <laughs> I just remember always giving, getting like a fresh funnel cake. And you're oh, thinking, that's fun. wow, this smells so good. And then suddenly the wind blows by and you get that. Like, <laughs> Delicious dump smell. Yeah. <laughs> kind of ruins the broccoli. That ruins Desiree's the whole, currently uh, eating. Yep. The whole funnel cake experience. For I you. am history's worst monster for bringing <laughs> way more broccoli than there is salmon, let's be frank, <laughs> into this room. We're for everyone's room. Smell. <laughs> um, I went to, when I was a kid, uh, in Long Island, there was this um, flea market. Where? Long Island. Long Island. <laughs> Long Island. One more time, please. Long Island. <laughs> Woodry in Long Island. Um, <laughs> there was uh, this flea market that was like this really magical place when I was a kid because there was like toys and like my friend got like a game gear and there's like video games and like everything you could ever want at this flea market. And then like I don't like I move away from there. I don't go back to the flea market for I don't know like a decade or two. Like it's, it's a long time. So I like go back and visit my dad in Long Island, and then we go to the flea market, and it's like the saddest place in the world. I don't know if it's like just my perception had changed in the flea market, or like it actually became like a sad place. Probably like, both. The internet is a thing, yeah. but like. It like ruined every like memory I had of that flea market. When you think about it, Amazon is the world's flea market now. Right, right. You can get anything. pickles. <laughs> you can get pickles on They'll Amazon. pickle anything for yeah. you on Amazon.com. In Long Island, at the flea market, you could not get a pickle. I'll say that. Wow. You get, like Italian ice. <laughs> it sounds like a thrift shop. Yeah. More What's this? Even? Than it sounds market. like a shanty town, <laughs> not a real flea market. There's no pickles. Listen, it's run down. On Long Island, we are. Um, a sophisticated people. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference between a flea market and a swap meet? Is there a fundamental difference? What's a swap meet. Oh, is that a Southern California thing? Maybe. Yeah, swap meets are fuck? yeah. It's it's kind of the same thing. It's sort of the same thing, like a, huh? a, a swap meet. Yeah. Is there money involved in a swap meet though? I thought it was like bartering. Well, no, there's money involved as well, but a lot of the times, yeah, it's like you trade something off for for something else. Um, there's a lot it's of so trading weird. going on, and that's why they call it. It I became guess. it became super popular with like trading work and like trading uh, crafts and things that you have. Huh. Yeah. I then think of it for like yeah, baby clothes. Yeah. Mm. When you've got like a kid that gets too big for whatever they're wearing and you go to a swap meet and swap it out. I just know like in the car community oh. and like car car culture. Yeah, yeah. Um, they use it a lot to like display whatever kind of uh, work your shop does. Oh, okay. And then like you can go display your shop work as well or whatever parts you have and then like you trade right. like services or parts or whatever. That sounds like a better use of what the swap meet in Costa Mesa, California is, mm -hmm. which is essentially a flea market. Yeah. There's none of that wholesome community right. Right. bartering system. It's just cash for like cheap rugs. Right. <laughs> You'd never that have to like cheap flea rugs. <laughs> You're swapping Are we talking cash? like two pays? Like <laughs> yes, both. Whatever kind with... of rug you want, they'll pickle it. 
<laughs> How do you convey all the detail that you normally find in a, in a flea market? I think in like... That, in that small window. I think too, like it, it looks smaller when I'm drawing it, but I, this is where I really, really trip myself up because if I'm, I'll probably do a print pass this time because like if we're doing it here, it's sideways for the watcher, but like um, we actually get a lot of room, like a lot of good room to detail. And that's too like where I'll establish like a wide shot and that's why I'll take like the full page. So you really got, still got like seven inches wide. We, you can pack a decent amount of detail in. Or it's like, you just sort of give the sense of clutter and then it can like fade out as the details go into the background. Right. But. Kevin, what year is this set? Uh, you know, we kind of talked about that in the last episode. We There's definitely no one's on cell phones. Yeah. And. Because the Amazon thing is an interesting yeah. thing. This is peak flea market mm. time. So it's like DVDs. I think if people have cell it's phones, it's probably flip phones. The Razor. Yeah. Maybe not even the Razor. Maybe like Nokia's. That's, so we're talking like 90s. Yeah, I think in our... Oh, man. They were... They were that was strong. Peak flea market time. Mm. Maybe it's a writer-artist cop-out, but let's de that's definitely like... Then Seth and I can just pull from our own nostalgia and just mirror this kid's timeline to like our childhood. Can you put somebody in a mullet? Can you draw somebody? Uh, there definitely are going to be people in mullets. <laughs> Hell yeah. That's yeah. definitely flea market 90s. <laughs> when you say pull from your experiences as a child, is that because you too found a magic sword as a child who led you to destroy oh. the world's evil? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just a classic 90s <laughs> experience. <laughs> um... I had a lot of cats, <laughs> and we had coyotes hang around our house a lot, so we had that going for us. Did yeah. any of them ever rise from the dead? Uh, only like a few times. Did that happen to you? That didn't happen to you? <laughs> That's why coyotes are such a threat. Rising from the dead? Southern California is a different place. I guess so. <laughs> um, it's funny that you say like, like at this point, technology is so pervasive in our everyday lives that like a lot of problems or like conflicts in TV shows pre-cell phone could have been solved with cell phones, right? So like a lot of Seinfeld episodes where like it's a minor inconvenience, any of it could have been solved with cell phones. Which is why we're sort of seeing a turn back with like the Stranger Things and like that era, like turning back to a time before cell phones because like it's it allows the story there's like the unknown element there's no nothing unknown anymore and so like uh you ever like watch a, a modern sitcom or movie where it's a problem that could very easily be solved with the cell phone and it's the same thing every time where it's yeah. like man i can't get a signal or oh no my phone's got it like it's the mo it's it's so trite now but right. it was like a crutch that writers had to use and and you know, like and you can only use it up to a certain point and now it's at the point where it's just like, well, fuck it, we'll set it in the 80s and like completely bypass this entire problem. Right. Which it's going to be something to reckon with like going forward as technology becomes more ubiquitous. Right. Anyway, you could consider that, Kev. It's very true. <laughs> then again, I guess people who live in a trailer park don't have like whatever Oculus Rifts or something. So maybe they do still use like uh, technology from the 80s just due to poverty. I think it should, at the final issue, it should zoom out and it's actually like 1647. Uh-huh. He's just did like a weird time blip mm -hmm. that had a trailer park, even though it was like King Reginald the Ninth or mm -hmm. something of the Ottoman Empire. It was Earth all along. <laughs> Those are what? It was Earth all along. <laughs> <laughs> the monkey movie. <laughs> the you know the monkey movie? Jim kneels down in the, the sand as he sees <laughs> Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Wait, are we talking about Planet of the Apes? Yeah. Oh. The monkey movie. Yeah, that monkey what movie. What are you talking about? Dunstan Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you know the seminal monkey movie. <laughs> Do you have any like uh, source material in your mind, Kev, of like famous flea market scenes from movies? From movies? Or like like I can't even think of a flea market scene from a movie, but like we went all the time. Uh, it's kind of funny. Like uh, I didn't I didn't know Seth until like I guess post college, uh -huh. but. Um, then I would just come over and then one of my first experiences, they were like, oh, do you want to go to the flea market? And then I was like, uh, yeah, sure, I guess. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they went and then we just bought like luchador masks and 
Um, Seth's a big movie buff, so he bought a bunch of DVDs and stuff, I remember. Classic. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can't remember too much. I mean, I know I went, went as a kid. I can't. Have you all ever been to the Austin Citywide Garage sale? Which appears to be 90% disembodied doll's heads. <laughs> that is not a joke. That is an accurate summation of the things that they sell. I really want to get it now. It is actually very fun, but it's just like, where did everybody get these dolls? Why are they all trying to sell them at the same place? It sounds like performance art, really. It's odd. <laughs> and they'll have them dressed up or in like scenes, huh. I guess, to try and better advertise. Like, look at this weird doll that I have. Uh -huh. It's at a small cafe that I built out of aluminum foil. But it's really weird. And we Ten dollars, please. <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. It looks like something's on fire. In oh, no, that's it. So I'm not really showing it, but kind of the vibe of this. I'm drawing, you know, uh, sort of someone Jim visits often at the flea market. We're trying to get the vibe that, like, Jim's here all the time. So uh, off to the side, I'm kind of referencing classic uh, Simpsons comic book guy. Um, but Seth actually described him as... Um, Murs the rapper, and so I've listened to Murs, but like Seth is uh, deep on hip hop knowledge. So I'm doing it's kind of, I got some face references, and I'll, I'll add some photos in of uh, Murs, but the with the huh. the body of a Simpsons comic book guy. What a specific reference. <laughs> that is you specific. Know, did y'all ever watch that Comedy Central show like Meet the Geeks or whatever? And these like super knowledgeable people would just like come on stage like these godlike figures and these like uh, regular yeah. people were trying to like beat them. I feel like Seth belongs on that show. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He knows like everything about Well, good it's super helpful too because like it's a it's a great shortcut when I'm asking him like in your mind like what does this person look like? Because I you know I'm, I'm trying to understand get into his head what it is so you know he'll just tell me it's like this person so I can pull references. Uh, it just really helps speed up the process for sure. Um, I'm amazed that as he was writing it, he like like because I like I write too, and I would never think to like describe a character with an ex like you're basically casting it in your mind as you're writing, which is like so remarkable to me that Seth was doing that. Yeah, and I guess like I'm looking I, for a MERS type. I guess in the real world you don't <laughs> maybe get that benefit because you gotta. Yeah, you can invent people here. Yeah, because we can just invent our like full references and that kind of thing. Um, what uh, Jim's mom from the lat from the beginning was based off is it Jamie Lee Presley? Mm. I think from My Name Is Earl. Yeah, yeah. Also a trailer parky show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Anna, who's in the room, is the teacher in issue one. Thank you. We just stole her like this. <laughs> Uh, you should else? download this recording and take it to your attorney for litigation purposes. <laughs> I expect to get paid. She already approved. The release has been signed. This is a dumb fun fact, but the character of Tyrion in Game of Thrones, when George R. R. Martin was writing it, based it off of Peter Dinklage. No! Yeah. <clears throat> and then, like, years later, they made the show. But when he was writing the character, he was imagining, like, a... 20 years ago, Peter Dinklage. What year was, was it? That 70 time? something or other. Peter Dinklage was like a public figure back then? It was then? later than that. But it's something like yeah. that. Peter Dinklage is eternal. Oh, yeah, he is immortal. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if that was yeah. referenced earlier. <laughs> I remember from the movie Elf. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. It's a bad guy. It's a big role. <laughs> Call me Elf one more time. <laughs> um, hey, Sam, what were uh, flea markets like in Kentucky? Well, <clears throat> have you ever heard of. Uh, Butterfly knife, you know what that yeah. is? So like butterfly knife, uh, <laughs> throwing is. stars. I do remember that from West Virginia yeah. flea markets. Yes. Yeah. You Those really need big. to. Kevin has a whole table of that. Oh. Like, you'll need to sync up on a nunchuck. weapon. Oh yeah, nunchucks. Yeah. yeah, nunchucks. Um, a like <clears throat> a plastic box where cash rolls around and you <gasps> get in. And you try to grab it, and it's like impossible to grab. <laughs> uh, turkey legs. Oh, uh, like chickens and cat. Uh, I remember chickens for sure. Oh, like pecking around. Like you can buy them. Like they are Five alive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I mean, you know, they had. I'm thinking of the expo, but it's similar. Yeah. But you just like little things that are. Oh, belt buckles. With your name on it, you wanted that. Nice. Yep. Yeah. I do want that. And it would be easy to get.
good, I think. <laughs> Sam's easy. I don't know. Maybe this ring. Okay. They would have to custom make yours. <laughs> when you Desert go to like rock. aquariums or zoos, you know they have keychains that oh, yeah. have the names printed I've out. never seen one. No, I haven't even seen name. mine. I see really? Aubrey. Wow. Yes. Huh. Pretty fucked up. Yeah. I see yeah. Daniel. My son is also named Bort. <laughs> they the have time. Daniel there? Someday I'm going to find one that has Kelby, and I'm going to be delighted. <laughs> and I'm going to buy it. <laughs> That's like how it. they get you. <laughs> yes, it is. Bort? My son's name is Bort. The license plate companies that make exclusively obscure names clean up because people are like, they have that, like, this is what it's like when doves cry moment. And <laughs> My name is McKayla. Yeah, with five exactly. Q's. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll pay. Uh, let's see. I'll come back to this one. I, I, I might change my mind on, like, I like the idea of giving new characters, even if they're temporary, like, very large panels. Yeah. Um, but is that Murs the rapper? Uh, <laughs> the essence of is that Gandalf. Yeah, yeah. It's like how many references? Hey, y'all got all the references. That's great. <laughs> um, so we'll see. I think too this is where we're getting back to like some of the stuff Seth and I talked about in the last one about like 180 rule or just making sure like you keep the everyone on like the right location and so if you if you flip around where they are that it's intentional or like there's an emotional moment that calls for it um, but I'll often draw like I'm most comfortable drawing left side looking to the right so I'll often just draw it and then flip it um, which I guess just a weird thing about left me. Side, to That's interesting. Why do you think that is? Is it something to do with being left-handed? I don't know. It's kind of funny. Seth and I talk like every time he envisions a scene, I flip it in my head. And huh. So when I draw it, he's like, oh, all of these are flipped. So I'll even intentionally just figure that's what he meant now, and I'll intentionally flip it, <laughs> assuming he's not doing the same thing. Um, but Yeah, you're both going to start now yeah. preempting the other one. But yeah. Uh, what else are you drawing on that scene there? Really, this whole scene is just an introduction to uh, this character, Craig, who's just sort of like, Craig's the cool one, so we're gonna meet two vendors in this, one sleazy, Craig is just the cool guy that sells DVD and manga. Manga? Manga? Mangoes? 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 Damn it. Also, <laughs> mangoes Got there first. and mangoes. Oh, shoot. My two favorite. store that's just manga and mangoes. <laughs> <laughs> yes! So good. <laughs> And like then the next door is like anima, anima, anima. Animas. Anima and animas. Come on by. Yeah. The <laughs> worst strip mall in history. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're down. <laughs> Can you give the skeezy vendor a mullet for Daniel's earlier point? Uh, I think he will. So nice. I'll talk about it more when we get to that page. Let me see. A curly mullet. Ooh, that Candy sounds powers? like the worst thing I've ever heard of. A curly, a curly Straight wet on. mullet. Ugh. Danny McBride. Here, like, this is how he, this is how he describes Dwayne, who will be the sleazy one. It'll be panel seven. Dwayne. There's a guy behind the table with a horrible crustache, a stained white tank top, torn jeans, and a trucker hat that reads crustache? "Gone Squatching." Gone Squatching. <laughs> this Bless. is Dwayne. The so, detail. <laughs> I think yep. he can very easily have a mullet. This is the guy that sells the knives, machetes, swords, nunchucks that exist at every flea market. The, um, the flea market I used to go to outside LaGrange sold uh, Nazi swords. No. Okay. I don't know if that was a common theme, but... Were they real? Yeah, or replica. One is uh, worse than the other. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Which was, one is worse? That's very interesting. Replica has to be worse, yeah, right? Because you're like, I revere it so much. Yeah. <laughs> Not like, oh, this is a piece yeah, of I history, bad yeah. history, but... <laughs> I nice. made a new Nazi sword. This is when Kevin pulls out a Nazi sword. And he's like, I bought it for reference. <laughs> this, the gross guy should have a Nazi sword. Yeah. Weird Easter egg. Maybe don't do that. <laughs> Never mind. Nazis weren't around, though, in the 90s. It was just in the 30s and now. But there was a whole stretch where we didn't have Yikes. them. Sorry, I didn't mean to get political on your live draw. Too late. Let's get, in the, <laughs> let's get into this. Nazis, are they good or bad? They're bad. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just make that. They're bad. <laughs> Get the fuck out. If you think they're good, don't listen to Kevin's YouTubes anymore. Sorry, Kevin, I had Did to make that executive this, call. Uh, podcast series? Uh, no. Kevin draws. Yeah. Mm -mm. 
This is where I usually ask for Seth's help. So it says Craig gives Jim a dap and is clearly happy to see him. And there's two dialogue boxes. And then I'm, I'm always stuck in my head of like where the camera should be for like a dap. I feel like I try to settle too much on just like the camera's out and everything's flat, maybe because that's easiest to draw. And so, I don't know, now I just... Could you, oh, you should reference the famous, um, like the meme of Arnold Schwarzenegger and that other guy clasping hands. Oh from yeah, Predator, and just zoom in on that, and then you're also making a meme reference. <laughs> Timely. <laughs> there is that option. <laughs> there are no bad ideas. You in invited me here. <laughs> I think too when I draw these, um, maybe because I'm drawing at such a smaller size, I always assume I need way more space than I need, and so. That's why this time, the main failure I feel, feel like I did on the last issue was not get a chance to print it out and just like really look at if it's making sense, like spatially. So that's what I'll try to do this time. Just do a printout and then compare. Um, but yeah. Have you ever talked about like what your favorite, maybe like what your favorite comic is like story-wise and or what your favorite comic is like visually and is it the same or are they different? I think for sure um, visually maybe even somewhat story-wise would be Saga. Um, Fiona Staples is just like in my mind like one of the best artists so probably that. Uh, Paper Girls is a really good story. What are some other really good ones? I think there's some really good I, yeah. <laughs> Story wise, Akira. Spider Man. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't really know either. I just wanted to hear what Kevin had to say. <laughs> I think, too, uh, I mean, I really like Watchmen. Yeah. I've, I've really. The Saga one, like all the, Brian, all the stuff Brian K. Vaughn writes, which is like Paper Girls and Saga and so many others, uh, I've always, I always like the way he does characters and that kind of thing. So I uh, usually will pick up anything he's attached to, and which is a lot. Um, so. Is Saga ongoing or is it concluded, story-wise? Uh, I think it's gotten going. They're just about to release like a large book three, like a large binding. Cool. Are, is anyone else confused why there's a Watchmen show coming out. Yeah, what? Do you feel like, like now? Money. It's just, <laughs> it's just so strange. The movie came out in like, I don't know, 12, 15, like a long time ago. Yeah. I thought the movie was fine. It's I don't. Fine. I feel like I don't need to know anymore. I don't need a TV show. <laughs> I'm good. Wait, I'll probably watch it. <laughs> <laughs> I will Just like I'll probably in. watch the His Dark Materials new show. I don't need it. <laughs> the books are like the best books I've ever read. <laughs> really? Yeah. What did I read? I didn't know you did that. This is new information for me. Did y'all see the Dark Crystal trailer? No. Oh yeah, it looked good. It's pretty good. Is it what? What is that gonna be? Uh, Netflix, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's based. I don't know if it's like set after the storyline of the movie, but it is Jim Henson's Dark Crystal, looks like puppets and stuff. Huh. Yeah. Oh, that's what. The show or the trailer? The, um, isn't Dark Crystal, isn't that like a movie Oh, the movie, movie yeah. From the, I don't know, 90s or? Yeah, 90s, maybe? somewhere in there, yeah. Okay. Yes. We should, we should watch it over consecutive lunches. It'll yeah. take about four and a half weeks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll watch like 20 minutes at a time because somebody will figure out how to turn the volume up on the TV for mm -hmm. half of lunch. That's true. Yeah. 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 Kevin should draw there. Great. Let's definitely do that. Um, and so these, these last two, I don't know, I might keep the camera the same. Um, a good thing to do in comics is what you can do is keep the camera angle the exact same and then really emphasize on like the change in movements, which lets it, it can be like a nicer beat to just focus on the characters without someone's brain having to like reestablish the shot. Um, so I think that's what I'm just gonna do here. Um, and I think what I'll do when I go back for the not thumbnails for the, like the final rough pass is just really focus on getting like a nice camera angle that works for both um, but we kind of just have this 
little moment where he's like, ref like looking through the comics or whatever or DVD to find what I think it's a manga, um, and then like getting to see that Jim is kind of still a kid and just super excited to see if the latest issue of what he wants is out before like shit gets real. I think I like this one, this issue, because it's kind of the nice, calm beat in like a normal, you kind of get to see a normal life, normal day in the life of Jim, which is just nice when things are gonna go crazy. It can be like all action all the time, right? Yeah. But I think you, uh, you know, you really get a chance to get a sense of the character, which is just cool, so. Uh, let's see. Kevin, do you have books that you've read written by other comic artists that kind of give you, like how do you know what you know about creating a cogent story that is easy for a person's brain? Um, there's, I'll have to bring it up on the next podcast because I don't have it in front of me, but there's this really amazing comic book that like lays out how to storyboard. It's more meant for movies, mm -hmm. but then there's a whole section at the end of like, how could you take that knowledge? into comics and so I think there's a lot of the same or at least how we process it I'd be curious to know how like other comic artists do it um, is like we uh, Seth kind of has like a writing background towards movies anyways and, and shows so we kind of storyboard everything out as if it was a movie basically and then we'll talk about shots and everything in that manner so but that's a really amazing comic. And then I'll just like, yeah, like I have Saga, Paper Girls, just like all of my top favorite artists on panel layout and like ink styles. And I'll just keep them on. I can all have them here, but I usually, when I start doing the next stage, just keep them on my desk and just flip through them constantly. And like, I'll have a sense of what I want, but then just try to find the source that kind of matches it. The basics though is like, you always wanna be, <clears throat> You always want to be reading left to right and like sort of at a top down angle. So it, like the page is sort of zigzag in some manner, just like flowing that way towards like the, from the top left to the bottom right. And then that's sort of the ideal. And then if you start breaking it, you want to break it intentionally in ways. So, you know, these are very simple pages right now. Like we had four panels down. Again, what we're doing here is by having less panels and more standard shapes we're slowing down we're we're not giving a reader a lot to have to worry about it lets them focus on the character and the scene and it slows it down to like a moment in the day but i think if we pan back over i would even say like i i was on the fence about opening the comic with this this heavy a scene but what we still tried to do here is like i'll get do a red line even though we kind of get the track, we try to make sure the bubbles are going down there, and then we're kind of trying to do again, we, we track the flow of the text bubbles across the page, and then again, you kind of get the reveal to the final bump. And then within each panel, you can do things to draw the user's attention, the reader's attention to the thing, like we're gonna have a little, I guess, manga style line arrow there. So we're okay like adding fun little things to call attention, like we're gonna intentionally have an exclamation mark in the thing. Um, but again, our, that's where Seth and I spend a lot of debating is like, how do we fit all this in, but kind of keep a flow? Cause these pages are really busy, but we did it because you often wanna split off a panel to show action. So like the, this three are the same sort of thing. It's like three moments of action in time. Um, but yeah. Does it look more busy in black and white than it ends up looking in color? Yeah, these lines are really heavy. Yeah. So, I mean, this is about the size of the comic, again, sideways for most people. But even that line, my final line is gonna be like that, that red line. Oh, okay. And so a lot of this is way heavier yeah. than it will be. And then, We'll be doing a video of it. What I'm gonna do is thumbnails first and then we're gonna come back and panel everything in Clip Studio and then you'll start to get a sense of like, the line width of this panel kind of helps dictate the line width of the characters, at least how I choose to do the width. And so it gives me guidance to remember like, don't go over this heavy uh, line width. So it should clean up, it shouldn't look as busy. Definitely the roughness as to. But 
you know, this one's pretty simple too. This, it's always good to establish this. I think the same as the show, you want to establish the shot first. Mm -hmm. We would usually do a big panel, but we're just establishing the feeling of a sunny day. Usually we'd establish the location, but in the, he's in the same location as the last issue. So if you'd kept a re reading, we didn't want to reestablish. So it's more about, this is a new morning with Jim and we focus on that. Mm -hmm. Then we show that again, he's in the backyard with grandpa back to him. But again, we're, we're still flowing top left, bottom, right. So, but yeah, uh, we're out of time for this one, but yeah, I will we'll call it for today. And thanks everyone for listening. Bye. 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 Adios.